All right, let's talk about the boat from bow to stern. First of all, you have a rubberized Hobie grip up front with a deck loop. Very simple, you can see I have my rope on there. Then you've got a hatch, okay? Hatch is hull excess. We've never had a lot, any trouble with these leaking, so they're pretty well made. Moving back a little further, you have a sail mount. That's where you can put your Hobie sail, which we have some. A lot of people put depth finders in there. They make a jam cleat with a ball that can go in there so you can put a depth finder. Flush mount rod holders. These here are for uh, access for your depth finder sonars. They don't come with this hatch. Let's talk about this hatch here. This is an addition Teresa and I did. And if you're gonna get a Hobie Outback, I suggest it, I highly recommend this sucker. It's just a tray. Teresa puts her DSLR camera in here. I put two tackle trays. It's got a little net. They come with the round hatch. This is much more useful. Oh yeah, forgot, side pouches. Side pouches, you can put just about anything in. This lever brings the rudder down. Now watch, here's the up. This is your seat, 2016 seat. Gotta bring it up a little bit to lock it on. Clicks on like this, bring it back, snap it. It's got a kickstand for elevated position, like that. A release down here to bring it up and down, like that. <laughs> yeah. Not super in love with the seat. Uh, I'm in love with the elevation and the quality of the seat, but this little gadget right here, I've never been able to get these seats to lock, no matter which one I get. <clears throat> Anyway, there's the seat. Here's the thing to prevent you from losing your seat. Always clip that. I've got a dolly in here, standard tank well. More flush mount rod holders. These, these side trays and the flush mount rod holders are key to how we film the show and how we fish, period. I love them. Got another um, access point to the hole. Here's an extra pin for your rudder in case you break one. They come standard in all the boats. And here's the rudder. We have the sail upgrade, which is a much bigger rudder. Turns on a dime. Best $28 you'll ever spend, however much it is. It's very cheap. Another handle on the back. And here is where you uh, let the water out. Train plug. This concrete is hot, man. All right, see if I can just hold it by my lonesome here. Lift it right off of the thing. In the agua we go. We'll be out back in the pool. Talk a little bit about this chair again. I love this chair when it's in position, people. But we do have some trouble with this kickstand. If you move forward in the seat, the kickstand comes down and that happens and I usually start cussing. But to be honest, that is a feature they need to work on. There's some guys who have rigged it to where the kickstand stays in the out position. They want some tinkering down here with the system, you can make it do that. But to me, it shouldn't. When you lean forward, it shouldn't collapse. We also have a little bit of trouble with this thing never locking into place. So the seat itself, beautiful. Very expensive, 550 bucks for that seat or something like that. For 550, it should operate a little bit better than that, but when you're sitting in it, it's a beautiful aerated seat, very comfortable. Let's jump in it. All right, you can see the Outbacks are really stable. Okay, this is the Mirage Drive system. This thing is amazing, and they've actually improved it to where you get one free paddle for every 10 paddles. That just means the internal system is more efficient. For whatever reason, better bearings or something. You just lock it in place and you adjust. Hey, these little deals here have to be kicked to the, toward the front. When you drop this in, it should lock and they should be kicked toward the front. When you want, you will not come out. When you want to come out, you have to bring them toward you, which is counterintuitive. You would think if you brought it toward you, that would lock it, but it doesn't. That unlocks it. I use this to, to attach to it in case you flip in the surf or something. You don't want to lose this. This thing is very expensive. I think it's five or $600. They do come with the boat. The seat comes with the boat. It's all for one price. And this whole boat with the seat and the Mirage Drive is somewhere right around $2,200, which for what it does to me is a great bang for the buck. I mean, this replaces every motorboat I've ever had. The way you adjust how far the pedals are from you, depending on your size, you know, whether you're a little taller or a little shorter, is by squeezing this and moving it to the desired number. I'm 5'11", and number five is, is, is generally where I go. 
you want a little bit of a bend in your leg, just like a bicycle. Teresa operates at about, what do you operate at? One or two. All right, so it's split. I split them and then you can squeeze it and lock it into four or five, or wherever you want to be. You can play with that. When you're, when you're seated in the, the high position on the seat, it's very easy to jump up. And you can see the rocker on this boat. It pushes back a lot. We find standing and throwing very easy, easy as long as you're not in the gulf and rolling. As long as you're on a flat, relatively calm body of water, very easy to stand in. A little bit of pro and con about the Hobie Outback. I like to start with the pros. First of all, it's probably the most universal kayak made. The Mirage Dry system is second to none. The Outback's stability relative to speed is amazing. This boat has a 400 pound capacity, 181 kilograms, but it's not so big that you can't move it around. The design of it with the, with the trays, brilliant. The recessed rod holders, I've pretty much built 30 miles out filming around the recessed rod holders in this kayak. I love them. I like not having anything protruding in a kayak. The rudder system, the way the rudder folds up in the back, genius. That is a brilliant design. Look how out of the way that is. Max capacity on this chair, 275 pounds, 125 kilograms. This chair holds a lot of weight. It's got a lot of airflow. It goes high and low. Steering mechanism, incredible. Love this kayak. The cons of this boat, the seat design. We talked about it earlier. When you lean forward on the seat, put your weight here, the kicks tend, tends to come up and you end up on the ground like that. So you're constantly trying to lean forward and do that. So that's been a big irritant for us. We've had a good amount of problems with this seat with the way it goes up and down and the kickstand. Another problem we have with the seat, con, is getting it attached to this pole. You're supposed to lock in like this and you're supposed to rotate it back and it's supposed to lock. And as you can see, a lot of times one side locks, one side doesn't. You'll never be able to get that right. It gets frustrating. So the seat we get frustrated with but if you do get it locked in, if you do get it in the up position, um, which most often we do after fighting with it a little bit, it's a very comfortable seat. Uh, another con about the Outback is its weight. Even though it's much lighter than a pro angler, it's still a kind of a chunky boat to get around. All in all, this is the best fishing vessel, bar anything, on the planet. Weight is a little bit of an issue, seat a little bit of an issue, but all in all, this is my favorite boat to fish in. Before you bring this boat up to the beach or the lake front, you want to remove the pedal drive and you want to make sure the rudder's in the up position. All right, the question I get a lot is why do I prefer the Outback over the Pro Angler? Maybe this demonstration will help you. I'm going to remove this boat by myself with no help from anybody so you can get an idea. I'm 5'11, weigh about 195. take this out and I'm going to try to lift it. So you can see I can lift this boat but I'm not walking very far with it without wheels. These are the stats on this boat right here. Alright so as to the question as to why I prefer this boat over the Pro Angler, well as you can see even though it's hard for me to lift and move around, I can do it by myself. Pro angler, I can drag a pro angler. I can put the nose on the tailgate of a truck and then lift it up. But as far as moving it, I can put these wheels in this boat relatively easy. I can pick this boat up relatively easily. And I can move it around by myself. Pro angler, it gets brutal. Very, very heavy boat. If you fish a lot, if you fish once a month, you could probably get away with a pro angler. If you fish four, five, six, seven, eight times, ten times a month, the pro angler is going to get very heavy and cumbersome.
Teresa walks on it like it's a barge. But she's a lot lighter than I am. And that's my review of the 2016 Hobie Outback. Hey, thanks a lot for hanging out with me at the 30 Miles Out Kayak Test Facility. Hi, right, Teresa? Yeah! <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Now if I can just get this thing through the living room. <laughs>